I see tons of content on social media and tons of communication and comments and things trying to dig up keywords and like secret buzzwords and barber language and, and very specific measurements for haircuts. And this is like a really, really popular topic. I mean, if I were to just start doing haircuts and taking a ruler to give you guys useless numbers at the end of every video, I feel like my views would go way up. But the thing is, having these lengths and numbers and buzzwords and, and, and barber lingo talk doesn't necessarily work. I think that's part of the reason it's so popular is it gives us this feeling that, oh, when I get my next haircut, it's gonna be better because now I know the right length. But then we keep coming back to the internet to do our homework between haircuts because parroting off specific lengths and terms and numbers doesn't necessarily give us what we want. If there was a simple way to just pair it off a series of this number and this guard size and this length and this key buzzword, if, you, if it was that simple, we would all have perfect hair. We would all just have great hair. We'd be able to replicate any of the greatest hairstyles we ever saw simply just by parroting off these instructions. But it really doesn't work that way. In this video, I wanna talk about why it doesn't work. And at the end of this video, I wanna give you, as far as my own perspective goes, the most useful ways that a client can actually request better hair and achieve it. So the first thing to understand is, obviously we wanna find some universal standard to communicate what you want. Like, like I saw this, I wanted it, I had to find some kind of standard that would translate across the board. And of course, we have standard units of measurement. But the thing is, when you learn how to cut hair, they don't refer to one of these. You don't use a ruler or a tape measure. In fact, if you go watch like some professional haircutting tutorial videos, and I highly recommend free salon education if you're interested in that, you don't hear language like six inches and a quarter inch here. You hear language like 45 degree elevation and triangular graduation. See, what we do when we learn to cut hair is we learn about the anatomy of the head and then that becomes our ruler. There's these key points and features on the head, things like the occipital bone, the parietal ridge, recessions, the apex, and that becomes our ruler. And then what we do with this ruler is we build geometry on it. That's why they say things like triangular graduation or square graduation or, or square layers, you know. And so it's all geometry and anatomy, but never once do we learn this in school. So it doesn't necessarily work to take a universal measure and hope that it translates across a very ununiversal canvas. Your head is different than the head on the screen. My head's different than my client's heads. We all have different head shapes and all these features and, and key points that I mentioned, the apex, the occipital bone, they all sit differently on everybody. And so when we build a haircut, we're looking at those features and we're building shapes to complement them. Now, Blake on the screen here is a literal giant. Um, the guy's like six foot six. He's just a big dude and he has a big head. So to get this look on him, he's got almost maybe four inches of hair in the front there. And if I wanted to create this exact same look on somebody with an average sized head, I wouldn't cut four inches. I would cut it maybe even half as long depending on where their apex sits in relation to their recession. And it's, this is all measured and figured out based on the anatomy of the head, not based on a ruler. And so when I first posted that Blake haircut, I did get a lot of comments, how long is this hair? And I'm like, well, I can't just tell you that because it won't translate. Because if you had an average size head and you cut your hair as long as Blake's hair is cut there, you would not have the same hairstyle. It wouldn't lay the same, it wouldn't stand the same, and it, would, it definitely would not fit your head the same. And so really it's like a complex thing, like, well, you gotta build weight in the front and, and balance out the, uh, the height near the recession compared to the apex. And there's so many other little factors involved. And so when somebody sits down to more or less replicate that haircut, they're not thinking, you know, the barber or stylist is not gonna look at it and go, well, that looks like four inches. Let me get out my tape measure here. That's not how we cut hair. They're gonna look at it and they're gonna see the height relation of the recession area and the, the fringe area versus the apex. And they're gonna see how the weight is built over the occipital bone. And they'll replicate it using lengths that match your own head anatomy. Another seemingly universal standard for requesting a haircut is guard numbers. That's probably the second most common question I get on any haircuts I post is, hey, what number is this? And that's another thing where I'm like, oh, I can't just tell you that because it's not the same. So first of all, every clipper company is a little bit different. A number two from an Andes Purple Guard is not the same length as a number two on a, what is that, in the Oster 76. Like a Metal Guard 2 is much shorter than a plastic number two. And barbers know this, but a lot of consumers don't realize this. Like a number two can be 
so drastically different. Number two is like my favorite number to reference because on some hair, a number two will show a lot of skin and look almost bald. But on other hair, if it's more dense or dark, a number two can show no skin at all. And so when you say I want a number two, it's like, okay, well, which brand number two do you want? And do you want to see skin or not? Because if you don't want to see skin, you know, I can look at your head and know a number two is going to show skin on that. Like you, you develop the experience to be able to understand that. And so ultimately telling me I want a number two doesn't tell me much. I mean, it tells me how long to cut the hair, but at that point, if your goal is better hair, and you think you're gonna get it by parroting out, oh, number two, because the haircut I saw that I liked online said it was a number two. At that point, what can I do that a person who, just any person who possesses a number two guard can't do? If it was as simple as, oh, you want the number two? Let me give you the number two. Wouldn't we all have perfect hair then? We'd all have exactly the hair we want. We wouldn't be looking at these fades and things going, man, mine never looks like that. So here's what you're actually seeing when you look at a fade. What a fade is, is not a number. It's all the numbers or a good series of the numbers. They'll take like the zero to the one to the two and then they're blended in between. And so it's not even, there's not one solid number really any of the way up there. It's like an infinite graduation from zero to three or whatever. And in between there, because they're all blended together, there's probably at no point in that fade an exact number two. It's probably like, you know, it's, it's been blended so much that it's like God knows what number it is. And so what a barber actually does, a skilled barber, when you bring them a photo of a fade and you go, I want this, first, they know their tools. Like they, that, they start off with that understanding and they know what the number two is going to look like. And then they have some experience and expertise as far as looking at your hair and knowing how that number two will look on your hair specifically. And then they choose the numbers to replicate essentially the painting on the side of the head. That's what you're doing when you're fading is you're kind of painting with hair. You're, you're blending the color of light to dark and the canvas, so to speak, the scalp on the screen, the hair texture, the density and everything might be completely different from yours. And it becomes the barber's expertise to be able to know if I do a two on this guy, he's going to look bald, but he wants this look that's not quite bald. So I'm going to give him a number four or whatever, you know, um, those, those little deviations, that is what a barber, that, that's what makes a barber an expert. And if you just go in and say, give me a number two, and that's all they do. Again, what are they giving you that anybody who possesses a number two guard can't give you? Are you gonna get a better haircut that way? This, this isn't about how to get easy haircuts, it's about how to get better haircuts. So just keep this in mind. Guards are completely different on everybody. Different companies with different sizes and different heads look different with different guards. And when you see a cool fade, it's not a number, it's all the numbers. Try to think of your barber or your hairstylist as a very skilled musician. Imagine you're gonna hire a musician to sing a song at your wedding. Are you gonna to go to them and say, hey, I went online, I found the sheet music, I want you to play C, G, E minor, B for eight bars. And then I want you to switch over to, I don't know, another list of chords for a chorus for another eight bars. And these are the lyrics. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high. No, of course you wouldn't request a song that way. Not only is it a surefire way to have the song played incorrectly, but it's a little bit rude to the musician to break it down to that level for them. It's like they are a skilled musician. I'm, I'm talking like you got some cover artist who's played 70 weddings last year. Like he knows how to, if you give him the song title, he either knows how to play it because he's played it 70 times or he can figure out how to play it because he's a skilled musician. And ultimately, aside from like undermining his expertise or whatever, like it's not like I'm saying, hey, don't tell me guard numbers because that's offensive to me. Like it's not that it's offensive necessarily. It's that it doesn't, ultimately translate what you want. I mean, it does in some sense, and you might think like, oh, well, it's, it doesn't get any more technical than that. How can they screw this up? But imagine asking for a song by laying out the chords you want and giving them a list of lyrics instead of just saying, I want this song or playing the song for them. You know what I mean? If you do that with a skilled musician, you're gonna get that song. It's just like with a haircut. If you say, I want this, and you show them a picture, you're probably gonna get a lot closer to that haircut than you know, again, having your own unique head shape, your own unique head size, your own unique texture, your own unique coloring in your hair. If you list off, I want this number and this length and this guard, are you gonna get the song you wanted? Or is it going to tie the hands of the skilled professional who knows how to play the song? And here's the thing, you know, if, if you were to request a cover song at your wedding from this skilled musician, chances are he's probably played it at 70 weddings before because it's a popular song and you're not original. 
But also, by this time, he's gotten so good at pouring his own emotion into it and making it his own that it really is going to hit hard at your reception. It's not just going to be him like playing the song for the first time and sounding awkward. He's eventually going to put his own kind of spin on it, more or less. And this could be a good thing or a bad thing, but I'm going to keep going with this musician analogy here, and I hope you guys are sticking with me. When it comes to haircuts, the exact same thing happens. If you find a haircut online and you're like, I really like that haircut, and you take it to your barber or stylist, all they are doing is a cover version of that haircut. And even if it's very close to the original, it's not gonna be the exact recording that the original artist put out. It's going to be a cover of it. And so keeping this in mind, hairstylists and barbers, we all have our own style. We all have our own little unique flares to the way that we cut hair. And if you want a better haircut than the ones you've been getting, it's, there's a good chance that you're going to a country artist and asking him to cover a metal song. You know what I'm saying? I know barbers who do really, really crisp, sharp, clean, perfect lineups and fades and things. And I could do those things okay, but it's not like my thing. It's not a song that I'm good at covering. And so I'm actually very upfront with clients when they want something I'm not good at doing. I say, look, I can try it. It's not the thing that I do the best. I highly recommend this other person down the street who does that a lot. And it is quite a bit um, the consumer's responsibility to make sure they're in the right chair to request the song that they want. You can't go to somebody whose specialty is fades and say, I want a long layered haircut. And likewise, you can't go to somebody whose specialty is long layered haircuts and expect to get a blurry fade with the design. So at some point, if you're getting a haircut that's really, really close to what you want, but it's still not exactly what you want, there is, there is always in 100% of cases going to be some level of that artist's unique spin that they can't turn off. You can't make your voice sound exactly like Billy Corgan. You can try, but, <laughs> but at the end of the day, you sing like you sing. And if that is a gap that you're finding with your current barber or stylist, you might just need to find somebody who covers more of the music that you're looking for, if all that makes sense. You might need to find somebody whose style is closer to the look you're going for. Okay, 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 okay. That was a lot of metaphors and analogies and me kind of trailing off there. Let's get practical for a second here. I'm gonna give you a list of terms here that really tell me nothing about how you want your haircut. Shorter on the sides and longer on top. Yeah, that's every haircut. Just take an inch off. That doesn't tell me what you want the hair to look like. I mean, I actually had a guy one time say, I just want an inch off all the way around. And when I was done, I took off a perfect inch all the way around. Like you could have measured the clippings on the ground. It was a perfect inch. And when I was done, his hair was sticking out of the sides because it was really coarse. And he's trying to like lay it down. And I'm like, oh dude, do you want me to go shorter? And he goes, I don't know. I just want the sides to lay down. And I was like angry for a split second. I was like, you told me to take an inch off. And I knew before I even cut it that if I took an inch off, it was gonna stick out. But he said, take an inch off. I took an inch off. It, it, he didn't tell me what he wanted. He told me exactly what he wanted, but he didn't tell me what he wanted. And it was my fault in that case. I should have actually pressed harder when he said, hey, take an inch off. I should have figured out what he wanted. Give me a number one to a two to a three. That doesn't tell me anything. That's just about every haircut is a one to a two to a three. That's, that's you walking in and, and me saying, hey, what do you want? And then you say, a haircut. When, when you're parroting certain guard lengths and telling me exactly how much to take off, like a, an inch cut off this way doesn't look like an inch cut off this way. Like, I don't know what you want your hair to look like. I don't know what you want your hair to do. So here's some terms that are a little bit more helpful, like pompadour. If you say pompadour, I know you want it big in the front. You want everything generally laying back. You just told me what you want the hair to do. Okay, so haircut names, pompadour, undercut, side part. That's kind of helpful. Now there's a million different versions of the pompadour, there's a million different versions of the side part, but at least we're getting somewhere and I kind of know what you want your hair to do. Um, another thing that's pretty helpful is just to clean up. You know, if you come in and you kind of want your hair to be the same as when you came in, but a little bit cleaner, that, that's pretty helpful. Or saying, I want a complete overhaul. That can actually be really helpful. I had a client who, when I met her, she had long, long hair, like halfway down her back. And we ended up cutting like a bob to her shoulders. And over the next couple of haircuts, she was like a little shorter, a little shorter, a little shorter. And finally, she like had to look me in the eye and say, I want you to cut my hair off. I want an overhaul. Like you've been taking off a little bit each time. And truth be told, it's scary to cut off that much hair, but it took this communication, this, hey, I know you're afraid to cut off a lot of hair on me, but just do it. Like I want an overhaul. So that is very helpful. Actually, that should have been in the very helpful category. So the last list here is terms that are very helpful in letting me figure out how to cut your hair. These are descriptive terms. I want this to lay down. I want this to stand up. I want this to be slick. 
I want this to be messy. I want this to be crisp right here, or I want it to be a little bit casual and grown in looking. Kind of sticking to feelings sort of and, and like vibes, that's helpful. Like, like when a lot of people don't like the way the hair looks the day they get it cut, a lot of people like it better a week or two later. And like telling me that is massively helpful. If you like your haircut two weeks later, I'll skip the lineup. Like I can make it look two weeks old today. Uh, what else is really helpful? Finishes, like if you say, I like my hair shiny, I just want it real slick and glossy, like that is massively helpful. It, it, it can be very, very helpful to say, I wanna look like I didn't try, but I actually don't mind putting in time to style it, but I don't wanna look like I tried to style it, like that's massively helpful. And so, truth be told, the further you can get away from lengths and numbers and guards and buzzwords and, and things that you're parroting that you read off the internet, and the more you can just communicate on a very casual, realistic level about the song title you want instead of the chords you want, that is massively helpful. Because here's what happens. If you say, just take an inch off all the way around and I'm working through the haircut and there's like a cowlick somewhere, I can either stick to your guidelines and just take an inch off all the way around and how are you gonna get a better haircut then? Or I can deviate from it to deal with the cowlick. And so if you, if you come in and you say, I hate this cowlick, I want it to lay down, and then I just do what I need to do to lay that cowlick down, I can lay it down and I can teach you to do it every day. But if you come in and say, take an inch off all the way around, I, I don't even know that you hate that cowlick. I could just take an inch off over and it could stick up still. You could just be living with these problems with your hair and looking for the right buzzword or length online to help you fix this problem. If you don't want to put in the work and the effort to sit down and come up with descriptive terms, or if you just feel awkward doing it, like if you don't want to be that into your hair, find photos. And in fact, find exactly two photos. So if you bring me one photo, what usually happens is you can't see half the haircut. And so I don't know exactly what's going on, but also when someone brings me one photo, there's like great lighting involved, there's some editing and then the, the model is beautiful. And as we're looking at the hair and talking about the hair, oftentimes they go, actually, I don't want this haircut at all. I just thought this guy looked cool. And so one, one photo doesn't work as well as you would think. And if you bring 10 photos, that is the same problem. It doesn't work as well. If, if you bring me 10 photos and I'm looking through 10 photos on your phone to figure out what you want, it's like trying to solve a murder mystery. Like I'm trying to find similarities and differences between each of the 10 photos to try to discuss what you want. But if you bring exactly two photos of you know two different people with similar hairstyles that you like, then I can look at the similarities and I can look at the differences and I can walk through each of them and go, hey, on this one, see this piece is laying down, but on this other photo, it's sticking up. Which one do you actually prefer? And then without you having to stop and think about all these things you want from your haircut, I can hold your hand and walk you through it based on exactly two photos. It just makes things so easy. I mean, that's like my ideal consultation is two photos and 10 minutes of, of just casual talking. And if we do that, I guarantee you will get a better haircut than if you walk in and say, I want a number two to a three and I want one inch off the top. If you do that, I'm gonna play the song wrong. I guarantee it. I hope that this information was useful. I really do hope that it can help clients out there to get a little bit closer to the hair that they really want. I hope that it can help barbers out there to maybe open up the dialogue a little bit more in the consultation. Um, I'm not trying to put anyone on blast here, but one of the most common complaints that I kind of hear from clients online is that their barber doesn't really do much for a consultation. They'll say, yo, what number? And like, if you open up the dialogue to have this bigger, deeper conversation, you will get them closer to the hair that they want. So final recap, your head is uniquely shaped and uniquely sized. So the ruler doesn't matter. Your head is the ruler. Number two, your density and your coloring on your hair is unique. And so the, and, and on top of that, guard numbers are not the same across clipper brands. And so the guard number, that's more of a tool that the barber needs to think about what number they're using. You don't need to worry about that. Number three, you are hiring a skilled musician to play a song. You don't need to feed them chords. You need to feed them the song title and maybe descriptive terms. I want this song, but I want it more slow and you know what I mean? Like that's how you would hire a musician. So think about talking to your barber like you're talking to a skilled musician to get a piece of, of art out of them. And then remember that just like with a skilled musician, we are covering these songs, so to speak. We're all gonna have our own version, our own sound, our own spin on whatever work that we do. And so if somebody's vibe of their work isn't matching what you want, I hate to say it, but get up and go find somebody whose vibe matches. You gotta find somebody with the right voice for the song that you're looking to have. And finally, use descriptive terms when you're talking about your haircuts and use exactly two photos if you can't find the right descriptive terms. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you're into it.